Okay. David, that, that's grand. Uh, and, and could you stick a, a wee note in the chat just to say that at the start of this yeah. uh, recording? Great. Folks, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I'm conscious that although we've maybe started uh, a couple of minutes uh, later, we will be finishing in good time, so we won't be uh, crashing your diary uh, right for the get-go. So in terms of today, we've got a, a series of short presentations. Um, lots uh, to tell you. We're, we're really excited um, about the extra support that's available in West Lothian. Um, the the format for today is uh, just just some of the uh, the usual. Uh, keep your your mic muted uh, when you're not speaking, please, as a courtesy to others. And if you've got any questions, uh, just use the uh, the hand uh, symbol, uh, and and we'll get to you. Um, in terms of today, the format is four short presentations, and at the end of each one, uh, we'll take uh, your questions. Um, so that way, you know, we can make it, you know, current, you know, you know, to that particular topic. I'm also conscious that uh, you you may uh, have uh, some questions that are commercially sensitive, in which case, either. Uh, Afterwards, come back to your uh, your uh, your advisor that you normally deal with here, or uh, come back to myself, and then we're then dealing on the basis of privacy and confidentiality as as usual. Right, well, uh, we'll start uh, with the first one, which is the business development grants. Uh, David is kindly going to uh, run the slide deck for us, so we'll start there. Thanks, David. Um, if anyone's having any issues with that, uh, uh, let us know, but um, it, it seems if it's come through yeah, just fine. So we'll go to that uh, next slide. Right, OK. Uh, there's three uh, key uh, themes I want to uh, make you aware of here. And again, this, um, this is... Um, support that's available uh, only in West Lothian and only to businesses uh, that are based here. Um, I'll just differentiate these. The first two, the gap and the training, are ongoing uh, long-term uh, fund, funds that we have. The first one, the Economic Recovery Fund, is time limited. Um, I'll explain the difference between uh, these uh, as we go. Uh, for GAP, that first one, this is for uh, some of the more major projects. This is where uh, project spend is at least uh, 100 grand. And typically, uh, the, the award uh, for that is, is a grant of, give or take, but about £45,000. Now, the, the GAP grant is, as I said at the, uh, the start there, that is long-term funding. Um, if you're thinking of doing something, maybe kind of 12, 18 months, you know, don't don't panic about that. Uh, work with us uh, because if gap is the right fit, uh, we can uh, look to get a, a a viable application. And if so, uh, get an offer out that, that meets that time scale. So gap is about um, taking your business up to the the next level. You know, it's about doing things uh, that increases your uh, profitability, your cash position. Um, takes you into new markets, creates higher value jobs. Um, and for shorthand, today we're going to call a higher value job uh, a starting salary of at least £25,000 a year. So, so that's GAP. Uh, that one uh, has been a very uh, successful uh, piece of the toolkit for us uh, here in West Lothian. Um, over the years, uh, we've supported uh, projects uh, through uh, GAP uh, a, a well in excess of about £30 million. Um, there's about £7 million of that gone to, to local West Lothian businesses, um, and it's created well over uh, a 1,000 higher-value jobs. 
Um, it's not for every business, but it's for those businesses that you know that meet uh, that objective. And we're really keen uh, to do more of that with you. The next one uh, is is the training grant, and uh, I, I don't need to tell yourselves, but um, getting the right the right staff, the right skilled staff, is becoming uh, increasingly challenging across uh, all sectors. Um, I think we're we're really keen to try and help you, uh, perhaps uh, retrain, maybe upskill uh, some of your uh, some of your staff. Uh, and equally, it's uh, rather than perhaps trying to chase new staff, maybe what, what we need to do here um, is, is use what we have and you know, give them the new skills, new opportunities uh, through training. And this training grant, and again, this is, this is a longer term one. So that one there maybe allows you to, to think about, well, what we're going to do over the next maybe two, three years you know, maybe starting from now, but you know, something over the next two or three years to really lift the, the level of skills that we have in the business to where uh, they'll need to be, you know, in, in that time scale. So those first two, <coughs> excuse me, those first two longer term funding, uh, well established schemes, uh, we want you to either benefit from those again, or if you have any. Uh, received uh, that kind of funding and you've got the right application, uh, let's have a discussion about that. This the, the third one here falls into the time limited uh, category. So this is money that's, uh, that's come in uh, that we need to commit uh, by March uh, next year, March 2023. So this is about economic, economic recovery um, and it's very much about uh, helping you bounce back for all the the, the challenges uh, that you faced uh, these past few years. Now, <clears throat> it's, if I could just kind of clarify, although it's time limited, um, it's it's outcome driven. So it it needs to be about being able to show that there's a growth plan there, there's a change plan that's going to ensure the, the, the longer term uh, stability and growth of your business. Um, although we absolutely don't want to, if we can't get enough projects to deploy these funds, we will return them to Scottish Government because it's not a case of um, just use it up there has to be a meaningful economic impact uh, through this. Um, but I, you know, if I was a betting man, I would say that, you know, West Lothian businesses will come forward here uh, with good projects and uh, within that fund, again, open book here, there's about £1.3 million uh, for West Lothian firms. We want you to use every penny of that. And in fact, what I would encourage you is if you can come forward with projects that exceed that, we'll use other funds to help, you know, we'll work with you to ensure we can fund it. Um, so that one there is about, it's a, you know, there's some of the common themes here. It is about um, training, upskilling, perhaps projects that are smaller than that gap one uh, at the, the top there. So maybe projects not on the scale of 100k plus, but still projects are going to take your business forward. So that one there, and it also has uh, some elements of social inclusion. So essentially, maybe giving people uh, from maybe a, a slightly more challenged background the opportunity. They have to be the right person for the job. Uh, of course, they've got to meet all the skills, all the requirements, they've got to be the best candidate. But if they also, um, you know, have faced, you know, some barriers, okay. Um, if you're if you're going to take them on, there could be extra support that we've got there. Now, I, I did say that these presentations uh, are short. That's me. I've I've hit uh, uh, my my time. So uh, we've now got five minutes in the agenda uh, for any questions. Uh, any questions, please. Just do that with a, with a show of hand. 
Uh, Morland, your good self. Hi, uh, thanks very much for inviting me on this in the first place. Um, the training grant, what is the uh, funding that is available? What's the, uh, you not mentioned that. Yeah, okay. What we're looking uh, for there um, is, is training that, that, that leads to, to formal accreditation. Um, so the only thing, if you like, that's ruled out is anything that's statutory. Anything that you have to do uh, to meet compliance, to meet your insurance, anything like that, that's out because you've got to do that anyway. Uh, this this fund in here, in, in terms of uh, the value of the grant, that, that could be, you know, that could be anything, you know, five, ten, fifty thousand pounds. You know, if, if you've got uh, a, a lot of training to do, it's going to increase uh, the resilience and scalability of business. We want a discussion. OK, if that was actually to take on someone in a training role for a specific, uh, you know, who's got specific skill sets, because uh, I know that when we've won a, a large hotel contract, um, that is very much standalone uh, and I could be doing with taking on someone specifically within that industry uh, to do in-house training to a five star standard. So it's that type of thing as well. I think with these, I'm conscious of the new the nuances, also some of the commercial confidentiality of these things. Mm -hmm. So let's let's work with you offline mm -hmm. on that. Uh, but it sounds very interesting. Um, really good question. And the bit I'm keen to do is, is, is to help you find solutions to this. Um, yeah. oh. Grant. Adrian, nice to see you. Hi there, Jim, nice to see you. Um, you'd mentioned that, that, that it's training that leads to formal accreditation, and I was maybe just looking for some clarity on that. You know, professional qualifications like finance and accountancy, you would regard very much as, as formal accreditation. Um, but I'm wondering, um, my, my business is recruitment, as you, as you may recall. We have a, a, a federation which, you know, you choose to join and they will, they offer uh, training and that comes with associated qualifications, which I assume are underwritten somewhere or other, but they may not. So what constitutes formal accreditation, I guess? Yeah. Adrian, that's a really good question. <clears throat> the, 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 the challenge, the opportunity, in West Lothian is, is that we need to raise the, the, the overall, overall level of, of formal accreditations across the, the, the working population. So if you can come to us with, with something that shows um, that by gaining that uh, accreditation that that gives you um, you know, a, a more skilled member of staff, gives you maybe some business opportunity, we want to have that discussion. Um, but in terms of formal, so it's, it's um, we certainly like it, that, um, I think SQF, I think level five, six plus. Um, and apologies if I'm talking in jargon here, but essentially, you know, if it, it's towards the, if you like, the higher end. But equally, you know, we want pathways here. So if you can say, you know, look, we're going to get some folks started on on this level and that's slightly below that, fine. You know, if you can show us a pathway of progression, you know, we want to have that discussion, we want to support. Yeah. David, I'm not seeing any other hands, uh, and in which case, uh, I'd now be looking to hand over to my colleague Lynn, uh, and again, David, I'll, I'll run this slide deck. Good morning, everyone. Um, I know some of the faces on here today. Um, my name is Lynn Martin. I'm a business growth advisor and work with a number of local businesses um, to help them with their growth plans. And um, one of the funds that we've got open at the moment is the Graduate Placement Fund. And this is a really good programme that we've got on offer. It's a grant award of 10K to support the employment of a graduate. The minimum sort of starting salary of these graduates that we support will be about 25K and above. And the programme is targeted to support roles in three main areas. So we've, we've, we've kept them quite open, but it's a green champion, STEM and cyber security. Um, and the placement must be in place for a minimum of 12 months. So the purpose of the support um, is to address identified skill shortages in the local area. It's also to support businesses to prepare for industry changes. Um, 
And as well as this is supporting businesses, it's also to create good opportunities for graduates um, and also help local businesses compete with large, some of the larger firms to attract good talent. So criteria, basically we'll look at most projects um, as long as you're West Lothian based. Um, and it follows a sort of grant application process where we'll have an, an initial meeting to sort of scope out the project, understand your needs, um, where we can help. Um, and if it's a sort of project that we can support, we then look to go to the application process um, and we'll request um, various documents um, to help the application. This will include the company's environmental policy, management accounts, financial projections, and adopt a job description um, confirming the salary level of the proposed role. And if the application is approved, we'll then offer a, a, offer an offer letter. And this is really important from the date on that signed offer letter is when you can fill the vacancy. Um, as with all the grants that will be mentioned here today, it can't be paid retrospectively. You can't take on a, a graduate and then say, you know, I would like some funding. And that's the same with anything, training, job creation, anything like that. So the drawdown process. Um, the grant will be paid after one the graduate has been um, employed for one month will require basic details showing the employee and evidence of salary payment and um, what we then look to do is a six month check and with the business and the the employee and then a 12 month review just to discuss what worked what did it work and um, what could be done sort of in the future they will take some feedback on that so that's um that's open that's um time limit limited money um as far as um time limited money um, as well. So we're looking to get that and in place for graduates obviously finishing this year to help local businesses um, go out and recruit some of the best talent. And that's and that's me. If there's any questions, please um, feel free to raise your hand. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> David, could you uh, maybe uh, stop uh, sharing now? Uh, just while we go to the uh, the, the question bit. Uh, first hand I saw uh, Lynn, uh, over to you. Jim, hi Lynn. Hi. Um, hi yeah. I, I know that you were speaking with Christy Buchanan and Careers or else it was Jim that was maybe speaking with Christy so I was just wondering, that's at Harriet Watt, sorry, um, I was just wondering if there's been much of a communication ongoing with the university with regards to the graduate placements um, or if there's something that else that I can do to help facilitate more of a relationship there? Definitely anything that we can do to to get um, well-qualified graduates into local firms that are, are, are noticing a skill shortage in the local area and um, that there is competition for some of the best talent. So if you would like to have a meeting after this, I know there's been some higher level meetings with them um, Jim and the team, um, but I'm happy to speak with anyone, anything we can do basically to try and get the funds out the door to where it needs to be um, for local businesses and for um, newly qualified graduates. So, yeah. OK, we'll do that then. We'll get something in the diary. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Lynn. That's good. Yeah. Um, any um, other questions? No. Uh, Jane, over to you. It, it's actually Ronnie that's here with me. We're both on the same uh, link. It's Ronnie that wants to ask the question, so I'll, I'll pass you over to him. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, Jim. Uh, is there any geographic requirements on where the graduates would live, although they would work in West Lothian, predeterminants on where their home is? Well, ideally, we'd like to support West Lothian residents and, and to West Lothian jobs, but we understand that, you know, there are issues um, being faced by businesses and attracting talent. So we will look at, at most projects if it's a hurdle for yourselves so that you, you can't find someone within West Lothian, then, you know, it's not something that we're going to close the doors on. It is something that we will look at. Preferably, like we say, we would like to, to create jobs for local residents, but um, we're open to look at basically how can we help. That's that's sort of our ethos, um, both the business and graduates getting into good positions. That's great. Thank you. That's your question, Ari. Thanks, Lynn. Adrian. 
I was going to be on mute. I just stopped myself getting those messages. Thank goodness. Um, I, I, I think this is a, an excellent uh, uh, event, actually. W one of the, the, the questions I have there, though, Lynn, is that y these are very technical STEM, cybersecurity and so on. And, you know, it's my experience, actually, that um, even those small embryonic startups or businesses generally could actually really benefit from an infusion of business graduates, actually marketing and so on and is that in, would that be included in, in this 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 opportunity or is it very much focused on those technical skills and i can see why it might be but i'm guessing you could also see why business marketing even sales could be a, a really important bridge to to greater success i think like i've sort of said before like it, we look at sort of anything at any sort of issue you have and or if it's not supported by this funds, we have got other funds available for job creation as well. So if you've got a company looking to take someone on, the best thing I can do is speak to one of the advisors, speak to me, like, you know, if there's not support specifically with this one, we will try and see where else we can try and help the business. Um, obviously, we do want to hit some of those targets, but I know from um, some of the other things we support, you can sort of, you know, in, in certain industries, you can see yeah. where STEM and if it was other sort of job descriptions, as long as it's, you know something that is, is tied to one of those areas um then we will we'll look at the project but any anything ask, like that we just we'll we'll even have a quick call and you know we're happy to sort of map out the project and say right okay well even if it's not this one we've got this or you know try and point you in a direction it's always worth having that quick call oh, brilliant thanks very much indeed for that Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Lynn. Jane, I'll assume that that's our legacy hand. If not, we can uh, we can catch up uh, later. Uh, but David, could you uh, share the slide deck for Amanda, please? Thanks, David. Amanda, over to yourself. Thanks, Jim. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name's Amanda, and I'm the Business Sustainability and Information Officer within the Business Gateway team at West Lothian Council. And today I'm going to talk you through the energy efficiency or the low carbon grant. So, Operating sustainably um, has become a source of competitive advantage and this fund is to support businesses with projects or processes that you might not be able to get over the line without this grant support. So the purpose of the grant would be to assist businesses with projects that work towards lower emissions or overcoming barriers that are related to hitting net zero targets. It would be help to implement new processes that support net zero targets and support to promote your business's green credentials and help to take advantage of net zero opportunities. So what does that actually mean? So some potential grant ideas. It could be how like you make changes to how waste is processed within your business. Um, so that can include like, an overall waste reduction strategy or even looking at repurposing um, what is currently your waste material. It could be to implement what we'd, we'd call nature-based solutions. Um, so that could be like investment in reforestation or rewilding projects that are aligned with carbon offsetting. Um, what is important to note, though, that these sort of solutions can't be used um, as an excuse as business as usual, and there must be a commitment within the application from the business uh, to make a commitment to change. Um, we could also support switching to more sustainable um, suppliers or raw materials. Um, if there's any barriers uh, in making out those changes, the grant could potentially be used to support that shift. Um, or it could be support in the marketing side um, to help market your business or even completely rebrand your businesses, uh, your business and your sustainable practices. I think with the whole like, sustainability thing for a business, the key really probably is credibility. Um, we don't want to greenwash. 
So I think being like open and honest and probably quite even about your business's long transition to net zero, that can help build like your brand awareness, rapport with your customers and also your customers trust. So the grant offer um, and criteria as a business, you could get up to £10,000. Um, you should employ a minimum of five staff, have been trading for over one year and you're showing signs of potential growth over the next three years. Um, we would ask that as a business, you've taken some quite early steps to do a carbon footprint calculation. Um, and there's some really great free online sources that I'd be happy to share with businesses um, to help you navigate that side. Um, and if you've got this carbon footprint calculation, ideally this fund would support changes that would help reduce emissions that are identified with what's known as the scope three emissions within the greenhouse gas protocol. But I do just want to say that, like again, kind of just reiterating what Lynn said, that we are open to like all project proposals and we're happy to have like a chat and everything would be assessed on a, a case by case basis. But we'd just be looking for that sort of clear link uh, back to carbon reduction um, and net zero targets. Um, also, as well, I just to say that as Business Gate, we, we do work really closely with key partners um, to provide like a full package of support um, relating to sustainability as it is such a massive, massive subject. And it's quite often it's going to be a long term uh, change to businesses and individuals as well. Um, so we worked really closely with uh, Business Energy Scotland, um, who are actually part of Zero Waste Scotland. Um, and we actually have a good relationship with Strathclyde University. Um, they have something called the Extend Programme, which is free to all SMEs in Scotland and provides like a one to one consultancy support. Um, so that's sort of all from me on this. Is there any questions? Thanks, Amanda. That's good, David. Right. Um... Uh, I see Jane's hand is still up, um, but I think that's that was a legacy hand. Um, any questions uh, for Amanda on on that presentation? Morning, your good self. Uh, yes, thanks, Amanda. Can you hear me? Is that okay. Um, is that extending to solar? Uh, changing, changing um, things over to that um, is is one. The other, the other thing is we're actually looking to change our chemicals completely. We're a contract cleaning support services business, um, so we're looking to change our chemicals to completely cost free and closed loop. Um, with our plastic, is that something that there could be a discussion over as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's it. We'd, we'd be really keen to have a discussion. Um, what I mentioned there is that we work really closely with other with our partners because there is a, a lot of other funding out there, um, and it could be that we can have a chat to see if there's anything else that we can maybe link in specifically around that switch to solar, and if we can also get potentially some local funding from our time limited low carbon grant, if we could maybe try and, uh, and support maybe an aspect or an elements of the project through that as well. But yeah, happy to have a, a conversation after today with you. Right. Uh, I'd also be really interested in looking at the three tools to assess where our carbon footprint is just now uh, and so on. That'd yep. be great. Thanks. That was a good question. Thanks. Uh, Lynn Somerville. Thanks, Jim. Hi, Amanda. Um, I think there's definite synergy between what you're talking about and a project that one of my colleagues is working on at the university. So that's a Dr David Cole, um, so I'll follow up with you and um, follow up to this meeting and facilitate an introduction. Um, I don't think it's the same thing that Shath Clyde is offering. I, I do think there's synergy there um, and there's a good chance David might know exactly what you're talking about with regards to Shath Clyde as well. Um, everyone tends to know everyone in, this, in these kind of sectors, so um, I'll follow up with you after the call. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Amanda. That's great. Now, I'm sure that there might be other questions, but I'm, I'm keen uh, 
to stick to time. So if there is anything after, we, we can uh, do a wash up. Uh, final presentation today uh, is uh, my colleague David Barclay. David, over to your good self. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, so um, yeah, I've been asked to present the digital development grant, so information about that. Uh, so just a bit, bit backhand about myself. So David Barclay, I'm also a growth advisor, similar to Lynn. So again, I know a few faces on the call, so it's good to, to see you all again and, and good to see some new faces. Um, so I'll just run through and give an overview of the grant. Um, so the digital development grant, as you probably guessed, it's to support you to do all things sort of digital. So the purpose of the grant is really to look at sort of reducing your sort of operational costs, so it's to help you streamline systems, maybe get rid of paper systems, introduce sort of maybe a, a new CRM or a new app and things like that. So the, the purpose of the grant is, as I say, is to help you increase revenue, improve your cyber security, move business online, anything sort of digital sort of projects that's going to help you grow and advance the business. That, that's sort of the overview of the grant. So the, the grant and offer itself, so there, there's two two different sides. So if you're a VAT registered business, there's a, a £10,000 grant up to projects up to 20000 so 50% cost up to a £20,000 grant. And then if you're not VAT registered, then there's £2,500 up to £5,000 project uh, and the grant is open to all West Lothian businesses but you, ha you have to have been training for a minimum of six months um, so that that's the sort of basic criteria um, for that eligible costs as I said um, we've got some listed on on the slide there so there's a bit of training if you if you need help with enhancing your digital skills and um, if it's to introduce a new software system a couple of projects I've had recently is a, a business is looking at bringing in a, a new CRM system. So they had a sort of out of date sort of paper system. So they're bringing in a, a, almost a PDA type system. So that's going to in increase um, efficiencies in the business. Other things might be a new IT equipment. So it might be sort of capital expenditure. So laptops and things like that. Um, it might be to um, improve your infrastructure just in, in IT in house infrastructure. Uh, also to help you maybe online the digital age we're in if you need help if you improve your website or your social media or things like that if there's a project around that we would look at that and uh, um, and also in terms of apps and things like that we've, we've had a, a couple of inquiries around that again if there may be innovative innovative and something different that's going to improve your revenue or make you stand out in the market then we would look at sort of projects around that um in terms of them, the process, I think Lynn and Amanda have mentioned similar process to all the grants. Probably initially have a chat with your advisor to discuss the project, uh, and then what would happen if that was all well? Then we would take you to the um, application stage. And in terms of application, um, there's an application form that needs to completed, and also with this one, we have um, Business Gate. We has a, have a service called Digital Boost, and as part of that service, um, there's a Digital Boost Health Check. So it's a five to ten minute questionnaire that we would look for you to complete. So we we would look for that as part of the application, um, and with that you get a, a report back highlighting areas that you're good at and also areas that you're maybe weak at. Round about your IT infrastructure and your social media or website. So it's also a, it's a good tool to have and it's a good starting point as well. So as part of the application we need that. Then also um, we would be looking at quotes for the obviously the work in terms of the project. So two quotes from two different suppliers. Proof that you're VAT registered, uh, also an environmental policy. All our grants now, we're going to be looking for that as part of moving forward. So again, we've got support around that. If you don't have one in place, we can help with that. But as part of the application, we'll be looking for an environmental policy. And then as standard anyway, we'd also look for your, your sort of your latest accounts and then your sort of management accounts and your your cash flow, your your, your two year cash flow moving forward. Um, so that would be the application stage. Then all going well, if approved for application, then it would be um, how it would draw down and, and get payment. So as Lynn mentioned earlier, it's a, um, an offer letter would be sent out. Again, like all of our grants, if you don't, obviously you need permission first before going ahead with the project. So once you had that uh, letter sent out and confirmed, then you could go ahead and start the project. Go ahead and do that and then we would normally pay out once you've you spent all your costs and things. We would collate the information. So we would need evidence of obviously any invoices and things for any work that was done. And then again, all the other stuff we probably have, it would be your um, 
your digital booth health check, your your invoices, your accounts, etc. So we'd already have that. So it'd really just be sort of the, the claim down of your invoices, just evidence that the project and the money's been spent. Um, on the back of that, I was also going to mention um, also as well, um, there's also a digital development loan that the Scottish Government offer. Um, which is an interest free loan. So there's potential if you're looking at doing a project, you could apply for the loan and we could support that as part of the grant as well. So they give out loans, uh, as I said, interest free up to £100,000. Um, so again, if you're looking at a bigger project, that may be something to look at as well uh, as the digital development loan. And as already mentioned, another good tool that we have through Business Gateway is the digital boost support. Um, and as part of that service, you can get a one to one support with a digital consultant. And that's 21 hours free support. So again, if you want to review your your sort of website and your social media, that's also a good starting point to look at as well. So we can direct you towards that. So hopefully that gives you a, a quick overview. I appreciate I've, I've sort of fired through that, but if any of any questions, just let me know. Go back to the screen. Thanks, David. Yep. That's grand. So that's the, the, the final presentation. Any questions for David on Adrian? Hi there. Uh, hi, David. Um, hi there. How long does the does the would you say the application process takes? I mean, I'm, we, we, we've done a preliminary review of our CRM position yeah. and I mean, it's, be, it's actually been very thorough. Um, you know, I've kind of shortlisted some businesses suppliers to support that but that's kind of where where i am just now um and i didn't know this was available so it's a great thing actually but how long does that process take the reason i'm asking is that we, our existing crm system uh, was literally designed in the last century um yeah. we didn't buy it then to be fair but that's when it was that's when it was designed like we were we were sold a pup or an antique i'm not sure um yeah. it's actually been pretty reasonable but it's just not fit for purpose now um so i need to move quite quickly on that so um it, you will i heard what you said which is you need to get approval first which is fine so yeah but um i've not really pushed the button on it yet so that's kind of what i was wondering that also includes uh, a new website and so on yeah, so I mean, reasonably quick, obviously, we can have a, obviously, I've spoke to you before, Adrian, we can have a, a, a quick meeting, and then it's really, as I said, it's getting that information together. We, they, we, would, we would then obviously review the application, and then once we've got that, then obviously that would go forward to management to review that, and then, I don't know, maybe within a few weeks, we could get an answer and you, you'd get a result back based on that. So relatively quickly, yeah. So if, if you've already done the sort of groundwork in terms of the quotes and things, then yep. yeah. Hopefully within a few weeks, if we got all the information from you, we can get a, an offer out to you if, if it meets the criteria. So yeah. Can I can I maybe drop you an email in and try and arrange a quick a quick catch Absolutely. Up? Yeah, of course we can we tee up a, a, a as well. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Adrian. Um any uh, further comments or questions for uh, David on the digital grant? OK, in, in which case, folks, I'm keen uh, just to uh, conclude uh, with any uh, final uh, questions or comments that you've got uh, before we move just to, uh, to, to close the meeting. Maybe just for your gallant thoughts, then, uh, it's just to say um, really um, keen that we get this message out here. There's, there's a lot of support that's Oh, uh, Mark, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's grand. Uh, oh, and then... Sorry, uh, I, I was looking for the little raise your hand, but um, I couldn't find it. <laughs> David, Mark, I... you, you've, you've got the floor now, on you go. Oh, sorry, um, David, I just wanted to ask, see with the, the digital development grant, does that include things like health and safety software? Because we've, we've recently moved to try and become more paperless on the health and safety side of things. Yeah. So, you know, RAMs, method statements, you know, toolbox yep. talks, van checks, all the things we try to get the guys to do on either tablets or phones, etc. So, as I so say, yep. we started this, pro we just sort of went live with this in February. So can you, obviously we've already started it, so could we still claim or is it too late to look at that? 
So unfortunately, it can't be obviously retrospective. Have you already started the process? Uh, have you got bits to do as our extras to be added on to the, the sort of? We we can add on as but it's a three year agreement we signed up to. So um, okay. there is certain aspects of the software or the program that doesn't work for us at the moment, but the developers are trying to make changes or they're constantly making changes to try and improve it. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah, I mean, happy to have it. Obviously, we can maybe go offline, Mark. I'm going to have a chat with you about that, obviously, in, in terms of the specific one you're talking about. Yeah, but I, as I said, we're happy to look at any project. So yeah, I mean, if there's something we can do, I mean, I, I think it ticks the boxes in terms of what you're trying to do. Obviously, streamline your processes, get rid of paper and things and make it easier, real-time information. So yeah, I'll have a chat with you, Mark. I'll catch up with you after this. Not a problem. All right, perfect. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. So Adrian and the yeah, Adrian, your hand first. Yep. Hi there. I just wanted to say I think this has been brilliant. Just add, asked it for comment. You asked for comments. There, there's been four brief presentations, all of which were interesting and pithy and, and uh, delivering some really good information. Not all of it was pertinent to me, of course, but that as opposed to death by Zoom or Teams call, um, this has actually been really great. And uh, yeah, so I just wanted to thank you uh, for it. That was all. So I'll stop being squishy and put my hand down now. Adrian, your, your comments are well received. Thanks very much. Folks, a, anybody, uh, any final points? Yeah. Okay, right. So, um, yeah, Marlon, yourself? Yeah, just to ask, um, and, and for someone who's used the uh, grant facility a couple of times and the process, I think somebody had asked that earlier on, how long does it take? It's, it's handled really quickly and well um, and been really effective. We appreciate it. Um, just to say, in, in each of the presentations, there are, I'm going, great tick, I want to talk to you. So do I go back through Lynn for for all of these ones, or do I approach like uh, Ross or or sorry David? I apologise. Do I approach David for uh, various ones? Well, that, that, that's that's a really good question. So if uh, you've got an existing uh, advisor contact just now, go back to them. We work as we, as one team, and we you know each is we can all, we can all deal. Uh, with the, the different elements. So, yeah, if if you don't, folks, maybe for simplicity, since it was David that sent the the invite out, if you have any questions and you and you're not engaging with us so far, in the first instance, uh, come back to David and he'll make sure uh, that we uh, that we get a follow up. Um, and and I guess that that's the other problem. My, my final point really is. Uh, I'm conscious that, you know, I, I, as business people, you talk to other businesses. If you think that what you've heard today would be interesting to others that weren't here, please share this information, uh, share the, the, the link to the website, uh, the recording, because we're really keen that West Lothian businesses get the chance uh, to benefit from either the time-limited funding or uh, some of that uh, more strategic funding. And, and probably that just... Uh, Morlan, I'm not sure if that is that a new hand or a legacy. <laughs> All good. Right. Uh, so first and foremost, and, and most importantly, my thanks to to, to you, the, the businesses, for giving up your valuable time to come along today. Uh, it's very much appreciated, um, and we're looking to do a series of these. Um, so you'll be first on the invite list uh, for for the next. Um, Thanks also to our, our, our stakeholders and, and, and well, uh, well known friends there for, for uh, supporting the event today um, and to Lindsay and the team for organising and making sure that we had a, a real good uh, presentation. If there's nothing else, uh, that's us. Um, my thanks for your attendance and contribution. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.